this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at Windows 8 Release Preview. Yes, we're going to turn this on, you're not going to look at just a blank screen, but I just want to show you how quickly it boots. This is the Samsung Series 7 Slate, the same one we used to look at Windows 8 Consumer Preview. So it has an SSD drive that helps it to be a little bit quicker. And I've just touched the power button and you can already see there's the Windows logo for Windows 8, and it's giving me a choice between Windows and 7 and Windows 8. We're going to go with Windows 8, since I've both installed. There it is! Oh, snap. And if I want to log on, there it is, and I just type my password and we're good. And here's the on-screen keyboard right here, you can see. And now we have a new option, we have the thumb keyboard. So for those of you who are going to be holding it like that, make it a little bit easier. You don't have to try to get in touch typing position with this, you can actually use a thumb keyboard. So what's interesting is how little has actually changed from Windows 8 Consumer Preview that we played with a couple of months ago. That means Microsoft actually pretty well likes what they've got here. And you can see we've got the Metro interface here. This is a lot like Windows Phone. It's got the live tiles going here. You can see some of these are updating or scrolling through. These are my contacts over here. A lot of stuff going on, obviously, with that. And you can swipe through really, really made for the touch screen. This is just ideal for tablets to see everything that I've got installed. And you can install stuff from the Microsoft Store, uh, from a CD drive, a USB key, just like you would with regular Windows, despite this kind of new and seemingly strange interface if you're not used to it yet. These are apps that I've added on from the Microsoft Store and a bookmark to our own website. And we have some new built-in applications here as well. We've got the sports, we've got the travel, we've got the finance going, and we'll take a look at sports, that's pretty cool. All of these are done magazine style presentation, really nice eye candy, and again, most easily navigated with a touch screen. And I think Microsoft's vision really is that all computers, all notebooks, all the all-in-ones, all of them are going to be sold as touch screen models someday in the coming years, and the days of non-touch screens will go away. So here we've got our big top story here, again, magazine-like presentation, if you want to read that article, tap right there. Lovely presentation, it's kind of like Flipboard on steroids. And we can scroll through here, there's a bunch more news items available, and then handy stuff. I've got my NBA schedule and my MLB schedule, those are the sports that I care about right now, so that's what it's showing me. And then I can add on my favorite teams right here, type in the name of the team, and. See what it gives us. So now I've added on my Bosox, who are not doing too well this year, but now I get a whole lot of stuff just about them. Again, same presentation, big article here. This is their standings at the bottom, that kind of fun stuff, and then news items particularly about them. Nice. Now when I'm done with this, I can either hit the Windows Home key, which oddly stopped working in the Release Preview. It worked just fine in Consumer Preview. I assume the functionality certainly will come back by the time this is released. Tablets do have the Windows key, so you can switch back. But otherwise, you can just swipe down and go back to your desktop, just like that. And if you want to go to your traditional Windows desktop, see this tile right here that says Desktop? Well, that's how you're going to get there, or one of the ways that you're going to get there. So we tap that, and there it is, your standard Windows desktop that you know and love. Missing, yes, still the Start menu. And I do indeed find it a little uncomfortable to not have that. There are third-party hacks that add it back in for those of you who don't like it. Now you'll notice that we still have the arrow effect here, the translucent menu bar down here. Microsoft, that that's going to go away, and it's going to be a flat interface, just like Metro. That means no more Window Chrome right here, which is a drag on performance, but other than that, you'll have your standard looking Windows desktop here. And you can right click on it and customize that. So I added my computer icon over here, for example. You can change your wallpaper. Another interesting thing is, when you set up Windows 8, it has you log in with your Windows Live ID. And if, you're, if you do that, set up two computers with the same Live ID, it's going to keep things like this wallpaper in sync on both. And I'll know what apps you've downloaded, and it can bring those down for you as well. Uh, knowing what apps you have and bringing those down in some of your standard settings, that's pretty handy. I'm not sure I really want to have the same desktop on all of my computers, though. Again, that may change by the time it's released. If we tap on my computer here, you can see you can get to some familiar actions, like the standard control panel. You can map network drives and do other useful things. So more of those powerful things you're accustomed to doing in a Windows desktop. So say I want to see the control panel. There it is, just like you're used to seeing in Windows. 
very simplified version is what you'll get in Metro. And if I want to get back to the Metro UI, I could use my little Windows button if it were working. You can tap on the hotspot or you can use it from the charm bar. So what's the charm bar in case you haven't watched Windows 8 Preview? There it is right here. Microsoft calls it the charm bar. And we've got access to our settings, to any devices, that is Bluetooth, printers, secondary monitors, because yes, external monitors are now supported, or second monitors rather. Sharing and search are here. If we hit start, it takes us also back to the Metro interface. And look at that charm bar one more time so you can see what settings are like here. Much more basic. You can get the tiles, you can check out your Wi-Fi, whatever you're connected to in terms of networking, volume, your screen settings, including your desktop picture, all that kind of stuff. Notifications, power, which is shut down, restart, that kind of thing. And your keyboard settings. And then down here it says change PC settings and that takes you to, well, more settings that are available here, which is still a relatively small subset of the full Windows settings that you get in the desktop mode. You can get to users, notifications, search settings, general stuff. Right here, you've got app switching control, whether you want that on or off. Touch keyboard settings, that kind of thing. Now the items that you see in this group of tiles, they're pretty stock and standard. With, with every installation of Windows, you're going to see that. At first, it's going to be your Windows Live or Hotmail inbox over here. Your calendar linked to Internet Explorer, very confusing. There are still two versions of Internet Explorer. There's Internet Explorer for Metro, and then there's the Internet Explorer that you get when you're using the computer in desktop mode. One of the things they have added is support for Flash, just basic Flash support for the Metro version of IE. Now, that means sites that they allow, like YouTube, for example. If you want to go to YouTube and watch Flash videos, you can now do that. But things like Flash ads are not supported. They're blocked how that's going to continue to roll by the time it releases, I don't know, but I don't think they're going to stick with that. Now if you switch over to desktop mode, you've got full IE, full flash, everything. That's because Metro apps actually do run a little differently. They run in the sandbox. You get both though. You've got Metro apps here and you've got anything and everything that you want, like Photoshop, MS Office, all that stuff too, running in desktop mode. But to get back to this, we've got our access to the store here, Bing Maps, SkyDrive, Music, which has a link to Zoom now. Video player, also linking to Zoom, and messaging, otherwise known as email. And you can actually pin an email account or just a particular like inbox to your group right here, which is pretty cool. The Microsoft Store has gotten a little jazzed up. Most particularly, they now have a little link to my app, so you don't have to go, wow, what did I install, what did I install, what did I buy, that kind of thing. So we've got Spotlight here, all pretty, top free applications games, social, entertainment, so they're all grouped by purpose. And if we take a look at top free, relatively small tiles, but you can see we've got a growing number of things here. We have Sketchbook Express still, which we saw in Consumer Preview. Great if you have a tablet and you want to draw with the pen. We've got Kindle available. Lots of cooking applications, Xbox Live games, several weather choices, including weather.com, USA Today for News, News Republic. Dropbox, good amount of stuff there. Given that this is Microsoft and this is Windows, I, I really am not worried about the selection of applications being available. I'm sure that they're going to be good. And if we swipe down, you can see here's Home and here's my applications. And it'll show me everything that I have downloaded and installed, whether it's purchased or whether it's free. Internet Explorer, well, it looks pretty much like your Internet Explorer here. It's running full screen, as you can see. Bing happens to be the default home. You can change that if you want. Nice presentation. And you've got access to reload here. You can pin any website you're on to your Metro Start menu there. And we've got settings. Settings are pretty basic. You've got view on the desktop, though. So say you're on a web page that has some flash that you need support. It's not working here. You can switch over to desktop mode. The URL bar is down at the bottom, which tends to be more convenient on tablets, certainly, and we'll check out our own website and see how it looks. And you can see the on-screen keyboard here. Very large, very easy to use, and you have to actually tap the number button to get to numbers. I, I wish there was a press and hold feature to enter numbers, so you don't have to keep switching between those keyboards, but that is what it is. And this is over our standard Wi-Fi connection. You can see how quickly it loads and renders pages. That's really very impressive.
and that hole over here, I assume, is probably a flash base ad that is not rendering. Very fast, very fluid, touch is easy to use. There are no scroll bars anymore, so there's no worrying about things that are too small to touch with your fingers. Highly touch optimized. The whole thing about this operating system, if you're using this on a Windows tablet, is it feels awful fun and awful like using an iPad or an Android tablet. It's shockingly pleasant and, and well suited both to leisure and to actually getting things done. So this is a real change from your usual, oh, it's Windows. I sit down, I do work, that's all I do with this thing, kind of feeling. Now, what if you want something like the old Windows Start menu, but you haven't installed a hack yet? Well, you, there's actually this little thing right here. You can tap, swipe up, and hit All Apps. And there's every single application. You've got Calculator, Character Map, Windows Journal, everything that you're used to seeing in Windows. Yes, it really is still here. So even if it's not pinned to a live tile, you can get to it and you can use it. And if you tap and hold on it, you can pin it to the Metro Start menu as well. So say we want to use Windows Journal. You just tap it. Install our little printer driver. You see user access control is still alive and well there. I was asking my permission to do that. And it immediately switched over to desktop mode. So for applications that are not Metro apps, it's just going to switch just that quick. And you can see we have our little start bar here and we're in regular desktop mode right now. So all the productivity stuff is here. And speaking of fun, here we are in the music application. Again, another large, very pretty presentation here. If we had a Zoom Pass going, we could stream music just like that. No need to download, buy anything. And they've got a whole bunch of music choices here, and we don't have any music installed on this, so you're not seeing any right here. But we do, however, have some video choices. We're going to check out the video player next. So again, we've got our video marketplace here, things you can rent or buy, TV shows. I've swiped through here, and you can see if I swipe to this side, it knows that I have these two movies. Now, these actually are not even residing locally. These are on my Zoom account. These are movies that I previously purchased, and it knows about them, so I can stream them down whenever I want. And you can see how quickly everything runs. This is a 1.6 gigahertz uh, second generation Core i5 CPU, ULV CPU, so it's ultra low voltage, same kind using Ultrabooks. It's, it's a good CPU and we got a good SSD in here, but this is not even a full mobile Core i5 CPU used in bigger notebooks and it's running just wickedly fast. The requirements for Windows 8 are actually quite low, so there's hope there if you have an older computer or even if there are Atom tablets that come out. So far when Atom tablets have come out running Windows, we've told folks don't buy them because they're just really unbearably too slow under Windows 7. I think there's real hope for them under Windows 8, given how lightweight this is, how quickly it runs. Uh, installing it takes only about 10 minutes. It's amazing, whether it's on SSD or a conventional hard drive. Uh, the installer, if you want to download it for yourself, it's freely available from Microsoft. It's about 3.3 gigs. You can install, burn it onto a flash drive, run it over the net as an installation, or put in a USB flash drive. Like I said, it installs in 10 minutes. You just can't beat it. And what we did is we put it on a separate partition on our internal hard drive so we didn't wipe out our initial Windows configuration because when full Windows 8 comes out, you won't be able to install it over the preview release. That's how it always works with Microsoft's Windows betas and pre-releases. Once you put it on here, that's it. You can't upgrade it. So I suggest you install it onto a separate partition. Or otherwise, have your recovery media handy so you can go back to your original Windows 7 OS and then upgrade that. You can upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 8 when it ships commercially. And there will be three versions. There's going to be the full Windows 8 for Intel PCs. There's going to be Windows 8 RT for mobile processors, um, like the ARM processors using Android tablets, and I'm sure we'll see some crossover that do both Android and Windows 8. And of course there's going to be Windows Phone 8 as well. So obviously, I, those of you who have been watching this know that this is optimized well to run on tablets and on touchscreens. But how does it do on notebooks? We're going to switch over to the Lenovo ThinkPad X230. That's an Ivy Bridge Core i5 machine that just came out. 12.5 inch IPS display. And we've installed it on there so you can see what it's like to use without having the benefit of the touchscreen. So here we've got our trusty Lenovo ThinkPad X230 Ivy Bridge notebook computer that's going to be coming out available on June 5th. And we're running Windows 8 release preview on this as well. Again, 320 gig conventional hard drive on this guy, not an SSD, but speed's still going to be good. And we once again installed Windows 8 on a separate partition. So no touchscreen here. 
Instead, if you want to navigate around it, we're using the trackpad. Now, Microsoft handed out some demo units loaded with this operating system, and it had custom Elan trackpad drivers. It was a Samsung Series 9 notebook computer that enabled the same kind of gestures you saw me using on the touchscreen to make life a little bit easier. But right now, it's not, it's not available if you download it yourself, unfortunately, so you're, you're not going to have any of those handy-dandy gestures to make life a little better. It's going to be a tough one, I think. You know how trackpad drivers are on Windows. There are several manufacturers, there are several versions of trackpads. Getting all those on, on board is going to be pretty tough, and you know that they multi-touch hasn't even worked very well on Windows 7 sometimes. So I hope, but I wouldn't expect that the multi-touch gestures on the trackpad are ever going to be any substitute for the touchscreen under Windows 8. So we're looking at the same user interface here. In fact, it keeps pretty much everything all synced up. So I've got the same desktop and all that kind of thing here, or same pattern. And if I want to see the Windows desktop, there it is. Just that quick. Now I've installed some applications on here, and you can see I have Word running down here in the taskbar. So yes, I've installed Word off of uh, CD-ROM drives, the full Office suite, anything you want to put on here, Photoshop, AutoCAD applications, MS Office, they're all here. They work just the same as they do under Windows 7. Now if I go here, there are hotspots in the lower left corner, I can tap that, and I can go back to this interface very quickly. And if I go down here again, I can switch back, so you see that little change over there, I can switch back. So there it is, dual mode done pretty quickly, because I assume that a lot of you using a notebook computer at first anyway are probably going to be using the standard desktop interface more often. If you want to get through all of these icons over here, say there's something, or tiles rather, that you, you want on the far side, you can kind of nudge with the cursor, though I'm, I'm not having much luck triggering it reliably. Otherwise, there's a scroll bar down here to scroll through all of these. And you can see right here are things that I've installed. The whole Microsoft Office Suite icons are over here. I made a live tile for Windows Journal if I put Photoshop or anything else, or games, that kind of stuff. They'd all show up with their own live tile. And we have all the same stuff that we showed you on the tablet as well. And if you want to access that charm bar, head down here in this little corner right here, and then there it is. And then you can bring your mouse up and you can access the same stuff. So everything can be done by moving the mouse around. Uh, if the trackpad supported gestures, that would certainly be a value added. Not as super duper really pleasant experience, obviously, as it is when you're using something with a touch screen, though. And you also get basic PIM applications. We have a calendar here. This can sync with your live account. It can also sync with Google and Exchange servers, so that's pretty useful. You have a variety of views available. And whenever you want to get out of an application, since there's no swiping down gesture here, you just hit the Windows key. And if you want to switch between all your running applications, you can see up here I can bring up what I've run most recently. And I can keep tapping over here and cycling through everything that I've got running just that quickly. Pretty neat. And again, somehow, inherently, doesn't feel Microsoft, does it? It's just really quick, really lightweight, really innovative, very pleasurable to use. I, I still have my doubts about the Metro UI in the short term for folks of you who don't have a touchscreen device, but again, you got that desktop to fall back on, and a lot of this stuff is just very pleasant to use. It's just not quite as expedient as it might be, obviously, if you had a touchscreen. And if Microsoft's right, and I hope they are, in five years, it, everything that's sold probably will have a touchscreen, so there you have it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. That's Microsoft Windows 8 release preview running on the Samsung Series 7 Slate tablet PC and on the Lenovo ThinkPad X230 notebook.